This is The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor, and this is a door to Crunch Labs where my friend Mark Rober is at, and I'm gonna surprise him today by talking about octopuses. Hey. Hello? Mark? And that's when I realized I probably should have talked to Mark ahead of time to make sure he actually had time for an interview. But that's okay, you know? Mark was my backup plan anyway, because the entire reason I'm making a video about octopuses in the first place is that book I mentioned earlier. Way back in January of last year, I read this book, The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor, and mentioned it to Mark because I knew he was doing a video about octopuses. When he learned that I scored an interview with none other than the author than himself, he agreed to do an interview to commemorate the big occasion. So buckle up, it's interview o'clock, starting with the author of my favorite sci-fi book of 2023. So. You're an extremely accomplished person. I was reading your bio to my mom, and she's like, hold on, this is an author? I mean, I started writing probably, well, when I was a really little kid, but I think I started taking it seriously uh, when I was 16 or so. Like, like really kind of thinking, okay, well, maybe I want to be a writer. And I started keeping a notebook and, and that kind of thing and, and really thinking of myself as a writer. And I was a terrible student. Like a 1.86 GPA, like oh, just wow, yeah. scraped oh, yeah. by. Went to a junior college and then ended up going to the University of California at Santa Cruz, which was actually had a great uh, literature program, but it also had a creative writing program, which I failed to get into. And <laughs> and I, I just, I stuck with writing no matter what else I was doing. I guess it has a lot to say with how our sort of self-identity can become a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. I just always thought of myself as a writer, and I always thought that that was something that was going to be a part of of my life. But I think it was, you know, that that just consistency that, that led to the mountain and the sea. Like just a lot, it's a lot of early mornings and it's a lot of trying different things and eventually you latch on to some kind of big idea and hopefully you can, you have the experience to carry it off when you get it. What I wanted to do with this book is, I had been reading a lot of, of biosemiotics and, and, and semiotics and kind of like communications theory and, and books about consciousness and that kind of thing. And what I wanted to do was have a novel in which I could bring all of that complex material to a reader in a way that I hoped would not be totally alienating. That I could strike a balance between a novel that was interesting and had a plot that was hooky enough to keep people involved, but at the same time not dumb down all of this kind of hard science and the difficulty of actually trying to communicate with another species, right? This is an incredibly hard thing, and, and, and I, I feel like in these first contact novels, quite often it's sort of taken for granted that you'll be able to do these things very easily that actually are quite difficult. I mean, I think a good example is how we've been spending decades around dolphins. Yeah, I was just gonna say John Lilly with the Echo the Dolphin stuff, yeah. The epistolary chapters were kind of like my way of cramming in some more of that philosophical and, and sort of science content into this, this space. I took a chunk of a book that I felt I had a piece of philosophy or science that I wanted people to understand. And usually it would be from some kind of theory book that was quite a difficult read. And then I would rework and reword and sort of work with that passage until I got something that I felt was accessible to you know someone who didn't have a background in, in the sciences. And that's kind of how these two books, these How Oceans Think and then the other one, Building Minds, sort of came about was this both sort of compilations of sections or, or ideas from, from other books that I, that I came across. What I really was doing was just rewriting those for the kind of audience that I thought would enjoy The Mountain and the Sea. And I'm not so sure what that audience was supposed to be but I guess what I imagine my ideal reader as is someone like myself like someone who reads a book hoping to discover something fantastically new for themselves like something that they didn't some way that they didn't think uh, of the world some kind of new avenues you know that they could sort of travel down and, and that's always my you know greatest joy in, in reading so I wanted the book not to be like other science fiction novels, but really to be to be something very different. What's interesting about about the octopus is just the, the the different neural structure that it has. So not only does it have these neural structures in its arms, they're also on a ring, yeah. so that the arms yeah. are, are communicating with one another. And it's like every two right arms are connected 
to each other in like kind of like a spiral pattern. Yeah, it's it's yeah. a very it's a it's a very interesting like pattern. So that it's it's its arms are kind of this collective appear to be something like a collective organism, right? Sort of independently exploring the world and then it has this central brain which can take over, but doesn't always isn't always maybe fully in control of its of its limbs. I mean, there's a lot of other quirks of, of octopus uh, neural structure, like if it learns something with one half of its brain, it actually needs to sleep on it, quite literally, before the other half gets it. Oh, interesting, yeah. That's weird. It doesn't have good right-left connectivity in the, in the halves of its brain. It's a very strange thing. This idea that this animal is sort of exploring the environment with its limbs and then suddenly wakes up and takes control, I think it's something that people can relate to very well. All of us who drive have, for example, woken up behind the wheel of the car, right? Like you didn't yeah. go to sleep, but you yeah. weren't there. Yeah. And the car yeah, went down yeah. the road and everything, everyone was safe and everything was fine. And then something happened to draw you your attention and you kind of like came back into consciousness. Like you were just sort of unconsciously maneuvering through the world. Yeah. That is probably, a, I would imagine, a lot like what it's like to be an octopus. That we both have uh, that uh, human sixth sense, what's it called, where we can sense where our limbs are in space. And that's kind of what you do in a car, I, at least for me. I always feel like I just become a car when I'm in a car driving. Right, driving. right. You extend yourself kind of out into whatever the technology is you're using. Yeah. Same with like musicians. You know, I played I played guitar and, and, and bass and, mm -hmm. and, and drums and stuff. And Drums specifically are like an octopus talent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and a common metaphor for a drummer, right? Like that you really have to be like an octopus. Now my full interview with Ray is about an hour long. And when I hit a thousand subscribers, I'll release that video where we talk about AI, language, and consciousness itself. So don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you know when it all goes down. Feeling hungry for more, I managed to get a hold of Mark's octopus guy, Bao, who was also hungry. So after treating ourselves to some pho, he agreed to show me his fish tank and answer a few questions. I started when I was probably six or seven years old, living in a village in Vietnam. Octopus is probably the most difficult out of all the sea creatures that you could keep. First, you gotta be able to source them, then you gotta be able to make sure they don't escape, and then you're gonna find the right food for them, which is kind of difficult. Almost half the battle. Shadi, there's an octopus eating a crab! My favorite fact about octopus is an octopus who actually look, look at you, like, they'll stare at you, and you kind of wonder, like, what's, you know, what it's thinking. Finally, the next day had come. It was time to ask the Octopus King all my most basic questions about octopuses. Mark still wasn't back, and I was getting the distinct impression that he didn't want to do this interview with me, despite me texting him about it. So I decided to ask his employees about their favorite octopus facts. I'm doing facts about octopuses, and I would love to know what your favorite thing about octopuses is. Mm, my favorite thing is that they have eight legs. Do you know that all eight of those legs have their own kind of like mini brain in them? Wait, really? They can taste with the ends of their tentacles, so they'll use that to kind of probe for food inside of little crevices like crab or whatever's hiding in there. If you could taste with your fingers, what would you do with that power? Mm, I, I don't know if I'd want that power. <laughs> <laughs> they have neurons in their tentacles. Right, so, yeah, brain cells, right? Right. Yeah. So if they lose one of their tentacles, the tentacle can still kind of swim around. And yeah. The thing. If you chopped off your arm <laughs> and it still moved around, how would that make you feel? A bit concerned. Okay. I feel like yeah. I'm not in control of my arm, but I could see it being useful if, like, I got stuck somewhere hiking and uh, I can't reach my phone. I could like go get my phone for me. Oh, like like cousin it. It just like yeah. walks over and grabs. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Their tentacles are both feet and arms. Do you think your feet are also hands sometimes? Sometimes when yeah, I'm yeah. trying to pick up towels from the from the floor. I found out just yesterday uh -huh. that it's not octopi and it's actually octopuses. It's octopuses. Yeah, that's yeah, the official word. Yeah. Has, for 18 days that we've been doing this, the video stuff, we've been calling it Octopi. Do you think you'll still call it Octopi even though you know the truth? I'm gonna 
train myself to switch it. Oh, that's a hard one. Apparently they can remember people. Oh, really? Oh, nice. I mean, might be fake news, but wow. you know. I've heard that octopuses have this like little hard beak and that's yeah. like the only hard part in their body. Yeah, so yeah, they, they don't can, have like, like bones and stuff. through anything that's like larger than the size of that. They can change uh, the color and the texture of their skin, which is super cool to see in person because they kind of go from looking all smooth. They kind of tighten up and their skin gets like really crinkly and weird. Now, if you could camouflage yourself, what would you do? I would 100% use it to uh, scare members of my family. I think the fact that they can squeeze through anything that they can fit their head through. Yeah, yeah, small, yeah, yeah. you know, they're fully flexible. If you could squeeze through anything, yeah. what would you squeeze through? I would for sure do more caving. I would be so much carry. less afraid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like everyone, how freaking smart they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So intelligent. Yeah. If you were put in a maze. The octopus would definitely win. The fact that each tentacle has its own brain. Yeah. And can actually think for itself is probably the most fascinating fact. Now, if you had a brain in each of your hands, <laughs> what do you think uh, the advantage of that would be? Just having more than one brain to keep the others in check. Having other minds that think alike but are still yeah. different, I think would be very helpful. Like their eyes, they look, you know, on the surface, like very similar to humans. But yeah, yeah. Look at like the evolutionary tree. They stemmed off so long ago that they have oh. all these like different little features. Humans, we have these blind spots where like we actually can't see a certain part of our, our vision because of our like our cord and our retina. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But octopus is like, they just happen to get an, a, a better roll of the dice and they don't have that at all. I mean, it's so different. Yeah. But, like they serve a similar function to still have two of them. How they're able to squeeze into really tight spots. If you could squeeze into a spot, where would you squeeze into? My first thought was a bank. Honestly, <laughs> same? Probably that they can grow their limbs back. Mm. And it takes like a couple weeks, but it's relatively quick. I don't know, being someone who's like scraped themselves up quite a bit. Oh yeah, I for feel sure, like for sure. Being able to chop off a limb and grow it back would be pretty amazing. Yeah. After the arms are cut off, they are still moving, and I want to know if it still hurts or not. Uh, I think of an Eric Andre skit. I am the octopus. <laughs> where he like, went to a restaurant and he was in an octopus costume, but he also had, I think, it should have been eight. I don't think it could fit eight people in the costume, but there's eight other people playing the arms, bumping into stuff and messing with customers and stuff. And it was funny, but he says in it, he says like, do you think of me as an individual or do you respect the hive mind? They're like, do not touch me, I am covered in poison. I don't know anything about octopus, but that's, like that's how I learned science is on like adult swim. The completely unique way that they move in the water. Oh yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of ways to swim, mm -hmm. but I think the way that the octopus pull it off, very fascinating favorite thing oh, about yeah. octopuses. If you could move through the water like an octopus, how would that improve your life? I mean, it wouldn't. Have you seen Mark? I heard something about him going to hang out with Kristen Bill. I think he's with Jimmy Kimmel. He's actually on an island with Mr. Beats. I know what you're thinking because I'm thinking it too. You mean Mark doesn't live at Crunch Labs? He has a life and friends? I was shook, but I wasn't gonna leave empty handed. I'd traveled too long and suffered too many undersized airplane seats to give up this easy. So I decided to give it one more day. I mean, how long could Mark last on an island with Mr. Beast anyway? You missed the, the boats right there. I feel bad for the man, but the show goes on. I got an island to give away. So while I wait for Mark to get back from wherever he's at, I might as well let Ray pitch his new novella, Tusks of Extinction, which is out now at your local library or bookstore. The Tusks of Extinction is, uh, the basic idea is that the mammoth has been brought back. They're doing that now. Yep, and there's and there's a big reserve put aside in, in Russia out in the, the on the Siberian uh, sort of steppe, and uh, they are struggling to survive because the other thing that went extinct when the mammoth went extinct is is mammoth culture. So, you know, a lot of being an animal even is is cultural and is is taught. They're not all instinct, and so the, the mammoths are failing, and what they do is they decide to download the stored mind of a, an elephant expert into the matriarch of a, of a mammoth tribe to see if she can teach the mammoths how to be mammoths. This person was an elephant conservationist who died a hundred years before fighting off uh, elephant poachers in, in Africa. He's very angry over sort of what happened to to the elephants. So that's where the, the, the sort of premise of the novel starts. And then it's all about what happens 
sort of explosion that happens when she finds out that there are poachers in the mammoth preserve. I'm doing it for the pleasure. That sounds cool, yeah. That's like taking two different types of bringing something back to life from the past in Smash Mission. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I like that, to put that's it. cool. Yeah. Good way to put it. Yeah, I mean, it's um, I think it's it, it follows on with a lot of the expert, like the sort of things that the mountain in the sea where it was exploring. But then, it's also a lot more about certain other, other things about communication and animal minds and things that I wanted I wanted to talk about. So I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Hey, Mark, do you have a second? Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I guess I'll wait then. Hey, so do you have a second? Okay. Hey Mark, do you have a second? I actually don't. I'm so sorry. I have to, gotta go. All right, no more dodging. I'm gonna have this interview one way or another. Uh, yeah. Hey Mark, do you have a second? I'm a little busy. Playing guess who? Against who? It's kind of like a solitaire version, but you know what, what the heck, yeah, sure. Okay, cool, awesome, thank you so much. I will take none of your time. Okay. You are the octopus king of YouTube at this point. What's your favorite fact about octopuses? I just love how they're basically alien. Our common ancestors, like way, way up, all vertebrates, like everyone with like what we consider like intelligent species are like way on this side of the, the, the tree of, yeah. of, of life and they just developed everything like completely independently. And so just the way their brains work differently, but like at the end of the day, it still equates to like what we would consider yeah. intelligence. Right? right, yeah, they've got like a donut shaped brain, right? Yeah. Uh, Mason was saying that they evolved to have like eyes similar to ours, but they branched off so far ago that like they're completely different, but they do the same thing. Yeah, functionally, even like their, when they change colors and stuff, it's not like they get information about the color sends it back to a central brain, and the central brain sends it back, it says, okay, become green. Yeah. It's like the sensors on the arms make those decisions like independently. So oh, it's yeah, like yeah. A distributed brain throughout their body. Yeah, because they've got like neurons in all of their arms and stuff, like yeah. brain cells, yeah. yeah. Did you read the book that I posted on Slack in February? About octopi? Yeah, it's called The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor. Oh, no, I read another one though. Other Minds? Other Minds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. how is that? It's good, That's yeah. also on my list. It talks about just like consciousness. Yeah. As well as octopi, but it's like an excuse to talk about consciousness. Right, yeah. They have effectively eight different consciousnesses in each leg, right? That they can take control of with their brain at any time. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything like you've specifically learned while working with octopuses that like you didn't know before that just by observation you were like, oh, whoa. I mean, they're just so curious. You know, if you put your ha hand in the their tank, they're, they don't run away from it. They're just like curious and you need to like actually leave things in their tank so that they stay entertained. Like right. they need to keep their brain engaged type of thing. If they get too bored, will they die? That's true, yeah. And if they do get too bored, you know, which obviously is an issue in the ocean, there's a lot going on there. Right. But in captivity, that's something you have to be mindful of, which is like, which is wild. Like what yeah. other animals like that, right? Right, well, if I didn't play with my dog, it would get very upset. But like die? But die, yeah. Like, like, I don't think any so. animal in an aquarium, for the most part, is like it just goes in and it's like it just swims around. Yeah, you just swim around and yeah. around. We've had a goldfish for 11 years. I only remember we have it like every four months. It probably only remembers you every like That's 10 true. minutes. Every four <laughs> seconds. Uh, now you drum, right? I do. I cannot independently control my arms you when can. I try and drum. I, it takes practice, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like that feels like something that an octopus would do, right? Because you're effectively going on muscle memory. What is muscle memory? Yeah, like... I, that's like, it's your brain has the memory of how to control the muscles. If I was doing... Like, I'm not fully independently, like, this one's thinking one thing and the other. This one's going, you know, double time. It's the combination of those that you kind of know. Okay, I'm not yeah. just, like, left it. Like, if I had to do, like, triples on this and doubles on that, like... Uh -huh. Like a polyrhythm type thing or whatever? Yeah, like, yeah. even that thing. I think that's triples and doubles. Uh -huh. What I'm doing here really is it, I just know the sound and the patterns. So I was like, bup, ba -da -bup, bup, ba -da -bup, bup, ba -da -bup, It's like practice and memory yeah, kind exactly. of thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, it's okay. It's like fully independent. And I think the good drummers have just done that before and they're kind of 
finding that pattern that the limbs, because that is truly, your brain is telling, like we have one central brain. Yeah, that, that tells everything to tells do Tells everything, yeah. right? Yeah. So, but that's not like an octopus. I think that's all the questions I had for you. Okay, so I can get back to my guess who? Yes, solitaire guess who, get back Final. to it. <laughs> is your person Eric? I do have to thank Mark and Crunch Labs for letting me come out and film in this facility. But what is Crunch Labs, right? Well, let me show you. Crunch Labs makes these build boxes, which come in the mail every month and include a toy that you get to put together yourself and learn all the juicy engineering nuggets that come along with it. Now, what kind of toy? Well, how about this uh, coin bank here? It has a mirror in it, and when you stick a coin in, well, it disappears. Where'd it go? And then when you go to get it back out, or if somebody you don't want goes to get it back out, well, then when they open it up, they're gonna get pranked by a spider. Now, if you think this is cool, wait till you see the rest of the toys. I wanna thank Mark for letting me come out and film at his place. I wanna thank Crunch Labs for making these super cool toys. And I wanna thank you for watching.